All right, you're welcome. This is still Hello Nigeria. Thank you for tuning in. Right now, it's time for us to look at our health topic of the day. Did you know that October all around the world is Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Now, today on the show, we have the founder of Pink Pearl Foundation, Orode Oppo, and she'll be speaking to us today about breast cancer. I'll be having a little discussion around the issue. And for those women who have not yet checked or have you know, some form of questions, and we hope that you can, we can answer some of your questions this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, again, let's make very welcome Orode Oppo. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be yes, here. Yes, we're excited to have you here with us for the first time on Hello Nigeria. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you are the founder of Pink Pearl Foundation. Yep. I was going to ask you this before we started, well, are you discouraged? <laughs> so let's hear the story. How did Pink Pearl Foundation come up? Um... Very hilarious story. So I was 18 and I was in, this was my third year of uni and it was just ridiculous. Um, I'm a psychology major, so I had a test in about two hours. So I was sitting in the library and I had recently just heard that one of my close family friends, um, at that point she was about 33, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and um, she had lost her life in the space of a year, literally from the day she was diagnosed. And um, so I was in my computer in the library and I started, you know, researching on breast cancer in Nigeria. So I said to myself, okay, you know what? I found nothing, to be honest. The statistics were 0, 0.00. So I said, okay, I was going to come home for a holiday that December, you know, just do a small show, um, give the money to any hospital to help women with breast cancer. So I reached out to Richard Mofed Damijo. He's kind of like a family friend. And I said, okay, uncle, this is what I want to do. I want to do a concert. I want to raise some money, give it to people with breast cancer, call it a D. That was it. This was in 2007. Um, I came home, we did a concert, it was huge. We were able to raise about 23 million naira at the wow. time. Yes, from that one concert. So we bought a mammogram. And I said, okay, let me just do one summit, you know, just one lecture. <laughs> Call it a day. I can't just do party and, you know, not actually tell the people what the problem is. Um, and this is what, 95 events down the line, wow. you know, from that one lecture. Um, so that's how we started. I kind of lost somebody to breast cancer. But five years down the line of the foundation, um, my grandma was now diagnosed with cancer. Um, she died two years after. The year after she died, my mom's eldest sister, the firstborn, was diagnosed with breast cancer. She died like three months you know, into it because apparently she had had the lump in her breast for 21 years. And she didn't even and know. And she didn't tell anybody she knew. She just didn't tell anyone. She was a nurse, mind you. She was a literate nurse. And then um, after my first child, you know, the doctor said, since you have such a family history, you mm -hmm. should go and uh, do proper screening. So I, I did a screening, ultrasound, you know. Normally, I wouldn't because of my age. I was 23 at the time. And she said, you know, I just feel led to tell you to do an ultrasound. So I did an ultrasound screening, and uh, they found two lumps in my right breast. Um, which would have not been found because normally I do my breast self examination test and all that if I hadn't done that ultrasound screening. So the whole process just changed, you know, my perspective of the foundation, and then I just kept going. I'm saying, you know, it was even me who is a founder being affected by it this closely. Um, so they took out the lumps, and last year again they found another one. So two on the right, one on the left. So yeah, pretty much that's how the foundation started and has succeeded all this time. I'm just I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. I'm shock as Personal well. struggle and yes. also looking at the plight of women in Nigeria because along the line, it's it, it was an eye opener. Each year became an eye opener, knowing that you know this thing is actually more serious than we are taking it. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that's it. And now let's talk about the fact that I like the fact that you emphasize that your aunt was illiterate. She was very nurse. literate. She was a nurse. She was working in that field because mm -hmm. some people feel that oh i'm educated um, i know all about it i'm sure but sometimes it's just a fear of accepting yes. the fact that this yes. is real yes. so how do people how can people overcome that fear because we keep talking about the fact check yourself self-examination we have a lot of campaigns going on mm -hmm. but people are still afraid of checking how do you overcome that fear i think it's a personal decision to make I was sitting at the opposite side with my doctor telling me, you have to go through the surgery, you have to do that. And I said, no, me, this is me, already, who is an advocate for cancer. But I had to personally make up my mind and say, already, I want to be alive. So it's a personal decision you have to make. A lot of people are misleading people and not telling them the right things. You know? So I think that we need to focus more on the changing of the mentality mm -hmm 
first of all, I, coming from a psychological point of view, you have to change their mindset. First of all, that's the only thing that can help them because I know people who are, they forget about my auntie now, let's say, okay, maybe she was, there are people who have gone to university like Harvard and she lost her life mm. still because she refused to go and do anything about it. This is not somebody who went to, you know, yes. she went to, she was a graduate of Harvard Law, but no, well, Harvard, Harvard University, and she still lost her life. She mm -hmm. outrightly said no, that she's not going to do anything about it. So I think it's a mental thing. I think once you start changing the mindset of women, you know, telling them the necessity of getting screened, taking away, I'm a Christian, and, you know, we are all Christians, but we need to also face reality. Let's yes. take out that spirituality yes. factor to start with. I mean, I prayed about when I saw my lump and all of that, but still and still, I still went to the doctor. Sometimes I believe you, know you also I mean? need prayers to even yes, make you the, the, the treatment work and that uh, God was in his infinite wisdom created exactly doctors and gave them to wisdom to be able to handle exactly. that. So it's important that we, we pass the message across that if exactly. you have a medical issue, Go. you need to see you a need doctor. To see a doctor. The doctor will you work on you while you're praying yeah. and everything will be fine. Now let's talk about um, the women, the tons of women you you've come in contact with mm. um what's the ratio people think okay breast cancer is like a foreign thing it's not really a nigerian thing mm -hmm. you know some personal people your organization how many if you want to give us a ratio how would you say it's been like in every 10 women that you've met or how would you say is the frequency of the women you've met with breast cancer it's very frequent in nigeria mm -hmm. in the u.s is one in eight but for us it's not exactly one in eight. From my experience, mm. it's probably like two in eight, to be honest. And this is for remote areas. These are based on the people that we've met. So I can remember a time where we went to Ecom, village of Ecom. We had about, we had about 300 women attend that uh, um, you know, seminar that we did. And out of the 300, about 50 of them had one abnormality in the breast or the other. Not necessarily breast cancer, yeah. but there was an abnormality in the breast. So again, it's very prevalent. It's more, I, would not, I wouldn't say it's one in eight in Nigeria. I'll probably say it's like it's in it. But there's a huge, um, huge increase in cases of breast cancer in the country. Yeah, I come yes. to the World Health Organization. There is a huge increase. And that's because yes. of awareness, because people are getting more aware, so they know what's going on. Really? Yes, there's a huge increase of, of cases. Because people now know, okay, mm. I know how to, I need to go to the doctor, and then, you know, they're getting more aware about the issue of breast cancer. So there's a huge increase but not necessarily a huge survival rate. Yes. So that's the problem that we need to tackle. And what influences the survival rate? A lot of things. There's a financial factor. There's the medical facility availability that is not available. We don't have the necessary equipment in the country. We have a few, but you know, how many million people yes. in Nigeria? And yes. out of that, 70% are women that would necessarily be able to handle that 70% of women in the country. They are not a lot. In Lagos alone, there's just a handful. And even the handful, it's ridiculously expensive. You know what I mean? It's ridiculously expensive. So the financial factor is one of it. The lack of the medical equipment and things like that is another factor. And then also this same culture that we have. There's a lot of stigma that goes into people dealing with cancer. Believe you me, you think it's just HIV, but no, people dealing with breast cancer go through a lot of stigma because they feel like, I met a woman who said, ah, me, God forbid, this breast that God gives to me, I should now cut it off. You know what I mean? Let the it cancer kill me. It. Really? <laughs> yes. She said it to my face. She's like, you know what? Let this cancer kill me. I cannot take out this breast. If I can't cut, <laughs> if I can't cut the breast, what do my husband will come do? So they have stigmas like that. Yes. So that's another factor that really, really doesn't help with dealing with the issue of mortality rates with breast Let's cancer. Let's talk about the men in this. <laughs> she mentioned that what will my husband do? Because a lot of men are not aware. Mm -hmm. You know, we educate. It's one thing to educate the women about breast cancer, but from what you've said, even educating the men, men is and how to be supportive of yeah. their wives in cases where... Because uh, to be honest, I can understand where that woman is oh, coming yes. from. Yes. Yes. Not, yes. Because, I mean, we're even joking yesterday in, you know, when we're doing our makeup, that ah, men are, they call themselves men are, they like a particular aspect of a oh, woman's body. Yeah. And mm. so you, are, you grow up to think that this is what a man finds pleasurable. So mm. as a woman, I don't feel complete. Yeah. Or she wouldn't feel complete if she didn't have it. Yeah. So uh, is Pink, Pink Pearl Foundation doing anything to work with the men as well? So we, we, I have actually even had male patients. We'll come to that story for another day. But yes, we. Oh, try yeah, sorry. To... Before you say that, we need to let people know that there men are rare get cases breast cancer. Of men who yes. have breast cancer. Yes, yes, so yes, it's yes. not really a woman yes. thing. One percent of men get breast cancer. We've had about two or three patients um, in the course of our campaign um, thing. So we actually still speak to men 
that look, you have to help your wife. I mean, I've had two cases where it was actually the man who detected it, you know, and said, you know, we need to do something about it. On the other hand, I've also had a case. This one, I don't know whether it was hearsay, but they were telling me the story that her husband drove her out and said, over his dead body, is she going to live in that house with that disease? Or breast cancer wow. stuff like that. Yeah, so we do have men who are still like that. So please, and please, and please, and please, if you don't help these women out, you won't have mothers to take care of your kids. You have to know that it's not a stigma thing. People are surviving this disease mm -hmm. for crying out loud. So if a woman, I know men are very attracted to, <laughs> to the breast factor, but she has to be alive. You know very what I mean? True. The life is more important than having the breast, to be honest. So we do speak to men. Um, however they end up taking it, we don't know, but yes. we make it our duty to at least let them know that please help these women out. It's not a thing for only them. And the stigma needs to stop. And it you, really does need to you, stop. You've, you've really talked so much about the factors that we aid survival. I think one very key one is early detection. Yes. So if you yes. can detect it early, mm -hmm. you can nip it in the board. Mm -hmm. Talking about detection of cancer, what are the ways? Now, the examination. Okay. Is there any way to like explain to people what are the ways, apart from self-examination, mm -hmm. by which one can screen for cancer? Um, okay, so BSC, as you all know, breast self-examination, that's the number one way of screening. That is doing it with your own hands. Um, there's also the ultrasound screening, which is not so popular the doctor would have to recommend it for you then there's the mammogram which is for older women so women above 40. Um, the only time they might use a mammogram for you if is you have like a really strong case of cancer if you're below 40 if you have a really really strong case but it's not advisable to do it if you are not um, above 40. so those are the ways of detecting and then there are obviously symptoms of of breast cancer. So if you see things like, you know, um, change in the skin of your breast, inverted nipples, if one breast is getting ridiculously bigger than the other. I mean, the human breast, one is obviously bigger, than, bigger the than the other, but if one is getting ridiculously bigger than the other, then that's a cause for alarm. If you start having like nipple discharges out of the ordinary, you know, you're not breastfeeding and things like that, and you start having nipple discharges, you have yellow, yellowish um, ducts coming out of your nipples. Those are things to worry about. And then some, some people have this orange there's a medical term for it but your skin becomes like an orange so you start seeing like almost like polka dots around the mm. skin so that's another is it like around the whole breast or the areola the breast. so around the skin of the breast okay. you see that some people have it around the skin of the breast so those are you know basics and of course the number one obvious symptom which is the lump mm. um you know then again not all lumps are cancerous mm. so you have to go get that checked so those are the um, basic symptoms right. um of breast cancer and so you have to know yourself you have so to know yourself women, you know, don't be shy to, yes. to look at yourself. You have to, to know yourself. Out. You have yes. to know yourself. You have to know yourself. And then you also have to take it a step further by doing medical examination. Because me, I knew myself. Mm. I checked my breast. I knew everything. But I didn't see anything until I actually went to do an ultrasound screening. Okay. Yeah. So, so know yourself. It's also important for us to tell women out there that not every tumor is cancerous. It's not. Yeah. So it's just important no. to check. Yeah. Check to be sure. It's better to err on the side of caution. And also, um, it's also important for you to know that not every discharge is cancerous. Exactly. At least there's something called um, hyperprolactinemia, where, where a woman produces so much prolactin, I think, and then yeah. had... So don't be scared. If you're experiencing such symptoms, go to the hospital, First. check. It's Quick. better yes. to be safe than, than sorry. sorry. Please, exactly. go and get checked. I'm sorry. begging. <laughs> even true. if, like um, I already mentioned, even if you haven't seen any of these um, any of these symptoms, Still get but checked. you just want to, just a routine check. And I like the fact that during this month, some organizations offer free checks. Yes. You can go. Yeah. And there's so many yeah. women, female organizations yeah. now who are offering walk-in checks. Yes. Yes. You, can, yes. um, you can just walk in there yeah. and have your, and, and do a breast examination. Yeah. Very important. Now, very we know important. that your organization is a not-for-profit organization, yeah. and there are people who might might want to be a part of your organization okay. or even want to have some free screenings are there plans like that in the world um, for the rest of this year we don't have anything going on because next year we're going to be 10 okay. so we're pushing all our energy to doing really impactful things for um, 2017 however there are a lot of organizations right now that are doing a lot of amazing things like she just said free screenings you know 10% um, discounts and things like that so if you actually go on this is where Google becomes your friend. You can yeah, actually yeah. just Google Nigeria NGOs, breast cancer organizations that are doing things for the month of October. And some of these people are not just doing it in October, mm. which is very amazing. You know, nobody's just concentrating in October. Breast cancer affects people from January to December. Very true. So most of these people are actually doing it through the course of the year. So please, um, you can go and check this. Celeb Celebacilif um, organization, 
there's COPE. There are a lot of people that are doing amazing things with breast cancer across. Yeah. Fantastic. I know there's a women's event this Saturday mm. and they will be doing breast cancer screenings. Screening. Yes. Okay, it's very beautiful. important. Yeah. Because like you rightly mentioned, get information rather than spending a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram. Nothing wrong Please. with that. <laughs> but also, take get some time out to get information. Yeah, that it's very necessary. I saw, um, you know me, I like to make references to Instagram captions. Someone said, <laughs> instead of putting the boobs on Instagram, get to a put them do a mammogram. <laughs> I saw that. I saw yeah. that. That was so, hilarious. Very I saw important. That as well. It is very important because, I mean, um, it springs up on you. God, God forbid, it springs up on anybody, but it's it doesn't know. Like they would say, it doesn't know face. Mm. It doesn't know title. It doesn't know educational background. It doesn't know none of that. It How just about age? Though? What? At what age? It doesn't know age and right now. Because right really? now, I've had nineteen-year-old patients. Wow. Yes. Before you would say breast cancer affects older, older, older people, women, yes. but lately you're beginning to see younger people getting mm. affected. Okay, with breast it's cancer. not. We won't let you go without talking about the <laughs> risk factors for okay. breast cancer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What are the risk factors? Um, number one, you're a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Gives you like a fifty percent chance of getting it, anyways. Number two, if you have a family history, so it is kind of hereditary. You know, going through the if you have a grandma or mom or things like that who has had breast cancer in the past. Um, number three, smoking is a risk factor. Um, I would say don't smoke, but if you do, don't do it excessively. Um, alcohol is one of it to a, to a minimal extent. Um, lifestyle changes in general is another factor. So the food you eat, because yes. having a food healthy you eat, lifestyle. Lifestyle changes is... is, yeah. is, is um, it's a factor. There's hormone as well. So there are some people who have ridiculously high hormonal imbalance, which ends up causing, you know, things like that. There's also, um, there's your age. So, well, at 2007, age is a factor, but right now, not really. Not, <laughs> anymore. not anymore. There's your, the period with which you start your menstrual period and when you end it. So if you start way too early and end way too late, so your menopause late, that's another factor. And then obviously childbirth as well. They say if you have your kids later on in life, that's a okay. risk factor. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there's actually no cause. There's no one pinpoint cause. I would say, okay, this cocoa causes for cancer. No, but there are lots of risk factors. And I think it's important for us mm. to also mention the fact that because she said it's hereditary, don't say, oh, my mother did not no. have it. My grandmother, it could start from you. God, could, forbid. Exactly. God, God forbid. forbid. God forbid, but it could start from you. So please, <laughs> yeah. please. I think this is a wake-up call. Even for me, all for of us, we need well. to go and check <laughs> yeah. get as checked, soon as please. we can. Get checked. It's very, very important. Indeed. Get checked. Thank you so much. All How right. can people follow you, um, your your organization on social media? Um, so we are on the plat we are on all platforms, Pink Pearl Foundation, and um, our website is pinkpearlvashfoundation.org. Okay. So you can follow us on social media or any of that. Great Thank stuff. you very Thank much. You so if much you have any more questions for Rode, please, please follow them on social media at Pink Pearl Foundation and on their website, pinkpearl-foundation.org. Org. All right, that's all we can take at this moment. But thanks very much, Orode. Really you. Thank you. to have you on our Thank show. You. And by the way, Orode is also a fantastic entrepreneur. <laughs> so we will be we will be on this more show. Power, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great entrepreneur, inspiring woman, phenomenal woman, and of course we cannot we cannot wait to have you again Thank on you. Hello Nigeria. Thanks oh, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All Thank right, you. today in history, we're going to be looking at some things and some people who have made today historical, particularly those who are celebrating their birthdays today if it's your birthday today yes we celebrate you we hope you have a fantastic day it's my dearest sister Olaito on Adeola's birthday happy birthday happy and birthday. also um, we have celebrities like Katy Perry who oh was born I love Katy Perry oh. and um Ciara was born in history like a boy today oh today's her <laughs> first birthday as Mrs. Mrs. Wilson, Mrs. Russell Wilson, Wilson yes. Happy and then birthday. Pablo Picasso. Oh my girl, I was supposed to be at Ciara's wedding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm busy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's Pablo Picasso, the oh. very famous We went famous painting artist. with him and spent the night Africa. I didn't go painting with him in 1880-something. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what I guess I'm the new Picasso. Yeah, the new Picasso. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tell us what you think. How would you like your painting served by Oliver Modi? Oli Picasso Emodi. You should actually follow Follow me on Instagram and see yes. my paintings. I paint. Oh, wow. I'll paint Follow her on Instagram. <laughs> Ask Oliver Modi on Instagram yeah. and Twitter. If you do not see any painting, you have my permission to 
you know, sh publicly shame her on Instagram. I'm going to do a throwback paint. Okay, I, please do so. I did, for my birthday, my birthday this year, I had a paint party, so. Yes. Oh, wow, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, friends and I, it was one of the things I did. I just had a few days of going out <laughs> to friends. <laughs> All right, don't forget, tomorrow is Woman Wednesday here on Hello Nigeria. We will be having a phenomenal woman joining us on the hot seat. I mean, it seems like it's a week of women, aren't we so, it you is. know, blessed? Women I are know, so right? amazing. <laughs> you can follow already, don't forget, at Pink Pearl Foundation on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me at Ayotom seven on Twitter and at Ayo Thompson on Instagram. Collectively, you can follow us at HNS for Zobia Max. Don't forget to follow Benga Aboro as well at Black Voltaire. You don't like me. You won't tell them to follow me. <laughs> After I gave you a whole section, you, you have to section, say it again. No. Oh, sorry. You have to say it again. I, I, I see <laughs> because I'm wearing black. At, okay, let me ask Oliver Modi. That's at O L I V. -E Please follow her. -E okay, if you don't do anything down. today, follow, follow her. And if you don't do anything else today, don't forget to vote for us. Eloy Awards. Yes, please. Yes. We've not even so asked for a vote in a while. Website www.exquisitemag.com. Go to the TV presenter section. You see Oliver Modi and Aya Thompson. Number Click. five. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Click or text text Eloy. I'm sure you see it on our Twitter and Instagram handle. Eloy Space, Oliver Modi, and Aya Thompson to 35070. A power market. She's a good marketer. Uh, she's a good <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I, should, again. I need you. I swear. You know? <laughs> Once again, thank you so much already for thank coming. You. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Foundation thank you. Team. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Have a wonderful day. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.